three, two, one. Hey, it's Wild Josh from Geek Cetera, and I am joined by Chase, Ezra, and a special guest, Luke. Hey. And we're going to be talking about Star Wars The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 4, or Episode 12, whatever you want to call it. What was the name on this one? Chapter 12, this is, oh, uh, I forget. The <laughs> I Marshall Part one. 2. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the actual name of this one, but um, it was a good one. So let's get into it. Um, first impressions, who wants to go? Uh, it's not a filler episode. Definitely not. Even though we were right with what we said. No Ahsoka. No Ahsoka. We looked at it and said with, with mm-hmm. uh, Carl Weathers directing, it's probably not going to be an Ahsoka episode. We were correct. Yeah. Just uh, the episode is called The Siege. The Siege. Okay. Good. Someone got it. I was Thank trying, you, but yeah. could not get Disney Plus to load for whatever reason. I always gotcha, forget yeah. that they have names. It's weird. Yeah, because like, like in the t- uh, in Disney Plus, it's just chapter twelve. Like it doesn't right. even say episode two for season two. It's just chapter twelve. So, yeah. um, it was good though. I was as soon as we discussed the fact and we it was brought to our attention that you know it was Carl Weathers doing this one and not Dave Filoni, and we weren't going to get Ahsoka. My hype dropped because I'm like, ugh. It's another filler episode. It's going to be more ice spiders. But there was no (laughs) ice spiders. In fact, there was actually a lot of story-building elements in this one that I really appreciated. So, um, I thought this one was packed with all kinds of interesting things. Uh, A lot of action. uh, A lot of uh, revisiting old friends. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think it it has a lot to offer for an episode. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. What did you think, Ezra? I think it has a lot of tie-ins too to the newer movies the new the newest yes. uh, trilogy which is kind of mm-hmm. cool and uh, i'm sure i'll have a debate on that later and i've got some pretty well organized points yeah okay that'd be mm-hmm. new for you <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Uh, that was a good one anyways i thought i agree that there was a lot of um easter eggs and stuff in this one that you could really pull out stuff that i totally missed but saw later through like, mm-hmm. reddit and stuff um, yeah, but I like the tie-ins to not only to the old stuff and to legends, but also to the newer newer movies and things because I just appreciate the cohesiveness of mm-hmm. the story if they can do that. Yeah, um, I know that so far they hadn't seemed that cohesive or connected in any way. Yeah, but maybe that will change going forward. I think this is Favreau and Filioni kind of like putting a bandaid on everything. Like, look, no, th- that stuff does connect. I promise. <laughs> it's like, it's only connecting because you exist. If for some reason Disney decided to fire you tomorrow, that would make no sense in the history of the world, like any of the stuff that happens in the sequel trilogy. So let's get into like a, just a rundown through it. I'm mm-hmm. trying to, I've only watched it once. So I'm trying to remember we, we where we, where we pick up. He just lands he's, on Navarro. He, he's just coming into Navarro with the ship all destroyed. Okay, and that's actually... Sorry, I'm going to jump ahead way to the end of the episode here, but how long is he on Navarro? Because those are some of the best mechanics in the galaxy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, when when the, the mayor of the town goes to you and says, no, no expense spared, fix it and fix it fast. They're going to they're going to pull everyone in. But I I I I agree with that, but still you're limited by the constraints of time and the constraints of the resources that you have in the shipyard. Navarro itself isn't a very like trade I don't want to say like yeah. trade hub, but it doesn't have a lot of natural resources like you think of you know well, other planets like Coruscant, you can get anything from anywhere because there's just so much. But he's kind of like in this isolated sell- settlement in Navarro, and you're just expecting them to have all this parts and all this extra scrap. I would argue the fact that the Razor Crest has been there many times. He works out of that location for years before the events of this. Mm-hmm. So it is likely, as he's a regular customer, that he okay. they keep a stock of parts for his ship because he spends money. Okay, That's mm-hmm. a good point. I was I'll also going to say it probably proves my theory about the uh, – like the nanobot glass because <laughs> like we were talking about last time how the glass 
of his on his spaceship obviously had holes in it and by the end he was flying and the cockpit was mm-hmm, sealed yeah. and you couldn't see any like patches or anything on it so i'm like it's just nanobots like it just mm-hmm. grows back right so you know it's probably just you know his ship just grew back you yeah. know with, with the aid of the mechanics obviously it's it's plot armor yeah plot armor yeah. there you go yeah it's it's returned all right yeah. sorry i just had to get I, off topic no, on that fine. i was thinking I, I, too I, I will say watching that uh, that part with them at that very end when when the Razor Crest comes that entire segment I'm like he's just gonna pop up with the Razor Crest mm-hmm. I, and there's a part of me that's saying it's been too short a period how is he gonna get this thing working mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah right yep yep but there it was also- yeah I noticed that with Star Wars in particular they never reference like how much time has passed in mm-hmm. their movies because like we had that episode in season one where um, they went to help that little village. Mm-hmm. And you get the idea that time had passed. And then yeah, that training montage, yeah. Them. But they never said, like, how much time. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, and, and, like, sometimes, you know, in movies, they'll say, like, you know, three months later or something. You don't yeah. get that with Star Wars. The same thing with, mm-hmm. like, the, the uh, um, prequel trilogy. We, like, we find out that um, Padme is expecting and then like she's like full blown pregnant yeah. and, like giving birth like Bang. like that yep. like how did that happen that's nine months of time that it takes yeah. for that to happen even if it's like premature maybe you know six months is mm-hmm. pushing it but like still like that's time that yeah it went like that so that seems to happen in Star Wars I guess yeah. they leave it up to well, you to determine how much they, time has passed they did come out and say that like episode three takes place over like a nine or ten month span mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they, they came out and said it after, but like when you're watching it, you don't really know. Yeah, you don't really know. Yeah, I guess. Well, you're, you, right. But Your you do is, know because you I see mean, her and she's not pregnant, and then you see her and she is. It's just you don't know yeah. how much time happens in between each story element. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. True. Which is the same with this, right? We mm-hmm. don't know exactly how long they were on Navarro, coming up with a plan to attack mm-hmm. that place, and I don't know. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's not just Star Wars, because like, mm-hmm. you know, if. It, <sighs> You know, there are movies where, like, y- your main character goes to the bathroom, obviously. You never see him go into the bathroom. And, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, there, that happens in. Uh, I'm pretty so, sure the Mandalorian so doesn't go to the bathroom. He doesn't sleep. Brett, he doesn't go, he doesn't in sleep. the he chat, just made a really good point saying that at the end of the episode, the child still has those blue crackers, so it couldn't have been very long. We've seen how hungry that thing is. There's no way he's keeping around a package of those blue crackers. You're right. That's true. Did, That's... Did, did anyone else notice what those crackers actually were? They look like macarons. They look like macarons, they, macarons yeah. They were macarons, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I did you say that macarons? Cool. That's not... Zero, I believe. Where baby Yoda, or the child, is down that little tunnel. <laughs> did, that yes. feel, did that feel a lot like baby Groot? What yes, this felt oh, so yeah. much like that. No, that, the red where point. you took the blue wire point. from, put the red wire there. Yeah. And, no, don't put the blue wire back. Like, I was laughing so hard through that scene. My favorite thing. And I, I saw too on Reddit. I didn't put this together that they were like. It also has the same kind of flavor of when Han is yelling at Chewie, like, "No, this one goes mm-hmm. there, and that one goes here." Like, so it's kind of cool how they had like kind of nods to different things. Yeah. Uh, while, while we're while we're talking about ship maintenance, I mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm gonna jump us back to the previous episode because I mm-hmm. wanted to talk about this. That scene when they come in, when he comes in hot to uh, the landing pad and he finally gets it level and right over the pad and then when the engines blows mm-hmm. out, <laughs> I was not expecting that. I no. fell off the couch laughing. Yeah. <laughs> The show itself is fantastic. not a comedy, but it has a lot of comedic moments in it that make it very fun. Yeah, a, a good show knows how to leverage that kind yeah. of uh, humor to make uh, to break up the action and the suspense mm-hmm. and everything. It's very well done. You know how at the end of episode three, where the Mon Calamari have fixed up his ship, and he's mm-hmm. like, all like kind of like, "What did you do to it?" I saw a meme. It was like, "You fix my ship with plastic bags," and then the the little Mon Calamari goes, "It's a tarp." <laughs> <laughs> Ezra should not have been eating food right there. He nearly <laughs> lost it. And I was like, like, "Oh man, they should have actually did that." That would have been hilarious. It's a tarp. <laughs> it's a tarp. That's funny. But yeah, so when we see uh, when they leave the camera still on that mechanic who's going to be fixing his ship, though. Did you guys know instantly that that's a bigger plot point? 
I did. Yeah, I knew I'm like, was why are you hesitating on this person? Like, yeah. that's something mm. is happening. And it happening. was just like a little bit. Like, it was almost like they want you, to, this person, to stick in your memory mm-hmm. so that later when you see him again, you're not like, who the heck was that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you kn- you'd know exactly who it was. Which person? I'm sorry. I'd... The one, like, the, the person from Squadrons. You remember that weird green-eyed orange lady? Yeah. Oh. That species. She's... Mm-hmm. that she there was one of them that was working on mando's ship and she's the one oh. who placed the tracker there for moff gideon oh wow. gotcha yeah. i yeah. missed that apparently we, we we know that the the character in in squadrons is female because she identifies herself i'm pretty sure but that yeah. one you don't know what, what gender it is technically it's may not you be don't sure. yeah but i was referencing the character from squadrons but yeah that yeah, no, yeah. that that mechanic is the one who puts the tracker there yeah so oh speaking of of like the interactions between navarro and uh, is it is it odd to you guys as well as as it was to me that the fact that gideon crash crashes his tie fighter Mm. in navarro cuts his way out of the ship calls for support to get himself back to his ship and doesn't flatten the city right there and leave It or seems doesn't even odd that, yeah. that those two characters survive mm-hmm. Gideon Gideon's exit because yeah. if I was a grand moff with an attitude yeah. like his, if anyone crossed me, I'd kill him. That would that yeah. would just be the logical thing, and that seems like and a bit more of a plot hole to me than. I think it's weird too that they still have that scientific base, and he doesn't go there, despite the experience that he's having run. Like, why wouldn't he go there for safe haven? Why does he well, leave Navarro? I actually the fact that he's got a lot of the resources from that base on his Star Destroyer, Super mm-hmm. Star Destroyer on his ship mm-hmm. tells me that he actually pulled out. He took everything yeah. from that base because that location mm. was no longer secure. Yeah. But then why leave anything there at all? Yeah, I mean that's a, why is that whole corner of the planet still mm-hmm. intact and not just a glassy smoking crater? Yeah. Mm. Kind of bizarre to me. Yeah. It's a big question mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did they end up actually blowing up the base or did those stormtroopers fix it? No. That, well, they blew that up. base is gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> I should have watched it twice. Yeah. It feels like so long ago. It was just like four days ago. Yeah. Um, so also what I thought was neat, I saw this, was that that base, that science lab or whatever, mm-hmm. if, if you look at it side by side with that one and uh, the one from Rogue One where um, Jin's father was working, mm-hmm. It's it's identical, like that was like their design, I guess for <laughs> standard science labs. Standard Interesting, labs. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. the empire the empire was all about cookie cutter standard. Yeah, cut as design. cheap as you can make it, the better. Yeah, that's why Tie Fighters suck. Like they're like build this cheap. <laughs> well, yeah, that's they're, true, yeah. yeah. They're, they know they're just yeah. gonna blow up and they're gonna need a ton of them. So yeah, they're yeah. fast all about and they're volume. cheap. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, all right, so let's get into some more of, I mean, some of more of the deeper things, I guess. Or, or actually, I want to I want to jump into some of the uh, Easter mm-hmm. eggs. So, um, first one I could think of anyways is, and I didn't notice this until I uh, saw it later, was the IG-11 statue. Did you guys see that? No. Okay. I should have sent you the picture. Yeah. Um, Jay, so you could have shared it. But there was an... In in this in this town square of Navarro, there is a statue. It's either like the honor of IG Eleven, hmm. and it's it's pretty cool. It's uh, oh yeah, just, yeah. just yeah. What they did with Navarro in general is basically like I think they did a good job of showing the oppression of the Empire, showing hmm. hey we wiped out the Empire from this planet, and look at how much it's improved. They have kids in school, happy. Everything was like bright and vibrant even though there's like yeah. no plant life it yeah. still was like a bright and happy environment i think that it was way like better it's so it's, from yeah, everything. it's such yeah, a yeah. small change to like the set but it i think it goes a long way to show you know like what happens when these towns or cities like take over for themselves and aren't following the empire governors who don't have their best interests in mind yeah, and it's another thing that shows the time that is taking place between mm-hmm. the end of season yeah. one and where we are in season two. Carl Weathers' facial yeah. hair shows that. 
Yeah, I also too. think, as, as much as that is, it's also a reflection of the the mayor's change of heart, where mm-hmm. he was content to just make as much money as possible. Yeah. The things that the he was the leader that, of the bounty hunter guild, so yeah, yeah, to like stop putting himself first. Yeah, and as soon as yeah. he did, he made that change and started caring about his town. It improved. Mm-hmm. It became yeah. better. So then other um, Easter eggs and things that we... We get the Mithril again, which isn't really an Easter egg. He was the first bounty that we get mm-hmm. that the Mandalorian gets at the beginning of Season 1. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I like the little tie that he says about uh, Carbonite. Like, oh, I don't want to go back in Carbonite again. I still can't see out of my left eye. <laughs> so <laughs> that was kind of a funny little nod to like yeah. uh, the other ones. Uh, that's... I think he's probably one of my biggest complaints about the episode. I feel like we didn't need oh, right. him. He was kind of... And that character is just kind of annoying. He's, but... he's funny, but he you are right. He's he's also annoying. Did anyone notice that he's just a big walking Chekhov's gun? The entire time, everything that he interacted with turned out to be something that happened later on. Mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't mm-hmm. want to get out of the land speeder. It gets flattened later. Yeah. He, he like, asks about the, the uh, Marauder. He wants to take the Marauder, and they end up taking the Marauder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not the entire thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, I guess. Yeah, I don't think we'll... I, I would be surprised if we got much more of him in the whole thing, maybe. He might yeah. be done, but I thought it was interesting Hopefully. that they tied it. it I mean, yeah. it shows... I think that was another point that just shows how much Carl Weathers' character, Grief Karga, changed. Mm-hmm. Because he's the one that mm-hmm. sounds like now we find <laughs> out, put out the bounty. Put out yeah. the bounty for the guy. And then he released him, and he's having him work off. His he's head. enslaved he was... him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he kept. He was not very nice to the guy at all. He's like he called him slave. Yeah. All the time, but yeah. Well, if you remember Chase, he said that the bounty was dead or alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know what his bring you, you know, him. or cold right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. So potentially that was what he wanted to do with him anyway was to kill him. So maybe he changed his mind. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Um, other things that we got in this episode were not really a um, Easter egg, but did you guys see the the cast member that was caught in the background of the yeah of the episode? I didn't know. I heard oh, you didn't. It, yeah. No. So now, like, this is like a becoming a living meme. Yeah, we're just, just everything. Some guy in um, blue jeans. Yeah, just blue <laughs> jeans and like a green shirt, and it's just like half his body. Yep. Is is there? So it's pretty funny. Um, there's some pretty funny memes. Yeah, I'm honestly kind of shocked that that made it to the, like, final cut. Because I'm like... Did you notice it live? I didn't. No, I didn't see it okay. until after. But I, I didn't see it, and I have a feeling it was one of those shots where it was so quick that you wouldn't. Yeah, but still, but that's something, this seems like something that Disney would just, like, oh, whoops, we're not going to waste the retake. Somebody just edit him out of this scene. Because with well, CGI, they, they could do tons. It either, right? and then it's possible, it but... pointed out by... Fans. Yeah, but also with like how detail oriented they usually are, I feel like. I mean, yeah, I, I could edit something like that out pretty easily, and I'm yeah. not like a pro or anything. You should um, do it and then send it to them and be like, hey, you <laughs> "You're welcome." I'll take two million in royalties, please and thank you. <laughs> uh, and now, um, so uh, one of the other things we kind of this was touched on. Chase, you can pull up a picture. I thought it was kind of cool. In 1970, whatever, they came out with so many different Star Wars toys, and one of them was called the Ten- the Kenner Troop Transport. And even though it was a toy connected to Star Wars, it never was actually in the original trilogy. It was just a toy they made just to sell product. So in The Mandalorian, they've actually brought that in. We got it at the last season or last episode of the first oh. season. I, I think I, I remember which one you're talking about. I was confused. Do I not also vehicle. get this like, in Rebels? Why are the stormtroopers like half hanging out of this vehicle? But now that you <laughs> yeah. explain that, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> yeah, it's because don't... it was just to sell toys. Mm-hmm. That's don't why they're half hanging out. Yeah. Don't we just don't we get that a similar design to that in Rebels though? Yeah, I yeah I said that. Maybe we do. I know, no. but I was saying I it again. Okay. Maybe. Energy. Yeah. I thought that that was in Rebels for sure. Like in in uh, Lothal. But it, but its original tie is uh, 
to the 19th. Joa said it made it into Rebels as a prisoner transport. Oh. Although, so. it looks different in toy, toy form. It, but that's also from, like, the 1920s, Ezra, that toy. No, I know, but look, it's the got, 1920s. like, little... It's got, like, little... This is 77, yeah. maybe? I mean, but... I could just put the image back up. <laughs> do it! Wait, do you have the toy image? Yeah. Oh. I... That's... Obviously, I can't see that, because I'm not watching the stream. Wow. Yeah, Josh sent well, all the images. I sent the toy, yeah. That was like the toy to have back in the day too. It was like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, so it's got never, like it's got like little movie. sections for the, like the troops to just like yeah. sit in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seems and it has very the gun on the gun on top and everything. So like, that gun will definitely hit the head of like those stormtroopers. <laughs> yes. It's like Doc, I'm turning the gun. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't even like squat your knees. So you have to like lean forward. So if you're in a tight enclosed space. Uh, you're just like eating, you, you're yeah. either losing your head from the wall or losing your head from the gun. <laughs> I love how that the um, the windows don't even have like glass panes or anything like shielding, just like the toy, like in in the actual like when they made it, it was pretty That's cool. True. Like like they could just shoot right into that. Yeah, Joe's like, the driver, and then what are you gonna do? Joe's saying the Rebels one is like a carbon copy of the toy, whereas the one in Mando doesn't have the the compartments for the troopers to stand. Well, the one in the, ep the end of the season one did, I think, because they get out of yeah, it. Yeah, it did in the end of season one, but this one's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, ah, uh, yeah. No, I completely see that. They are uh, both Marauders, but one is a, it, yeah, it's got One's the, probably uh, a no. troop transport. One's probably, Okay. I don't know. More I don't of know an how armor to describe it. Vehicle. Yeah. Can I put, <laughs> see oh, this geez. little focus? I'm sorry, but look. That's in Rebels, and they're, like, sitting in the side of it. Mm -hmm. We are so classy here. Like, yeah. Et <laughs> 10 out of 10 uh, professionalism. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, no, that's it's the, good. Yeah. That's the way that the, the Rebels were, right? If you can't make it, steal it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's why I oh. feel like uh, that tied in episode oh. three of season four. I keep stole that to shit. go back to previous episodes. Um, that's okay. You can. We'll let you. It, you see the the walker, the repurposed AT, -AT mm -hmm. that pulled the ship out. I thought that, that was, was awesome cool. with the crane on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so we really we know where we want to go with this, right? We want to talk about what happened at the end of this episode. Probably. Do we? The most. Do we? I mean, I want to talk yeah. about about you know the main man himself, the Mandalorian. No, Alpatine. Oh. I mean, okay. I think that's what Josh means by the end of the episode. Unless yeah, you guys want to, uh, so I have reason to believe that that's Palpatine in the tank. Like that's, that's being basically like cloned or, that's or at least they're making a body for Palpatine to, mm -hmm. cause should I put up the, like, uh... and, and I think Kyle, and I wish Kyle was here cause I want him to explain why that he thinks it's not, he thinks it's snow. And boom, image on the screen. Fancy. We have an image? Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. All right. So I think it's Palpatine because um, if when we go to Exegol in the last mm -hmm. episode, right, mm -hmm. we see Snoke in tanks on Exegol. Yeah, so why, up. why would, why would, why would he be like experimenting on Snoke clones? If there was only one, like there was only one Snoke, right? Uh -huh. And he, well, first of all, that makes no sense because we see multiple v versions of Snoke, right? So either he was making multiple copies for some reason, or those are all like failed attempts. Uh -huh. So my my thinking is that Snoke was created on Exegol because that's like the lab where they had you know version one, version two, and until they finally got the, uh -huh. the real Snoke that was uh -huh. like actually. So I think that this experiment is they're trying to create. A body for Palpatine, because because I'm under the impression that Palpatine was the one who created Snoke. I think I yeah. think every pro project has some sort of purpose for Palpatine in one way or another, even if yep. people involved in it don't know. Mm. And throughout, there have been clear attempts to, you know, bring cloning back, and I think that's what Palpatine's been yeah. doing is just giving the project to anyone who seemed keen 
and yeah. taking advantage of the best results. And Snoke was probably a failed attempt, but he used Snoke yeah. um, himself because he was uh, capable enough, uh, although not to Palpatine standards. And that's how yeah. he ended up with Snoke. I think that's a viable theory. And and my like my understanding too was like the reason Palpatine didn't wasn't just like okay I'm the supreme leader of the First Order mm -hmm. and he had to do it through a puppet was ultimately like and and we don't really know how the First Order gained power, but you know if the New Republic was preaching that Palpatine was like an evil villain bad guy, then you can't just have him like rise to power again. I. You, agree but at the same time literally they are still space nazis there's no way where you can whether you're being led by snoke who's just different space hitler than the uh, emperor palpatine it's still space hitler like you're still the same ideals like you can't just because you don't have one leader doesn't mean you're a good group of I people think, i think the logic behind that is far more straightforward with snoke on the throne he seems like a weaker less dangerous person as Palpatine. If Palpatine just popped right back up before he had his ducks in a row, mm -hmm. they would have just gone straight for him and tried to kill him again, which they did as soon as they knew. They they put yeah. okay. everything into killing him one more time. So Fair. this was just a play to buy time until Palpatine could get himself properly cloned and ready to go for the next fight. Yeah. So I, I agree with that too, but I also, so like, you know, there's also the whole Luke thing, like, Luke yeah. definitely would not have left the scene if Palpatine just reemerged. Mm -hmm. You know, he wouldn't just like disappear and like never come back. If Palpatine came back, he'd come back and face Palpatine because he knew personally how evil Palpatine was. Yeah. The other thing too is like the the Empire's like they have no reason to make Snoke at this point. Like yeah. there's there's people vying for power and it's up for grabs. And the Moffs, the Grand Moffs, the Grand Admirals, whatever, are fighting for who's going to be in control of the Empire right now. Mm -hmm. With, like, multiple different factions all spread out throughout the galaxy of, like, little tiny versions of the Empire, right? <laughs> so why would they just, like, let's make a leader for all of us. And if they were going to do that, then they would have just, like, ha let's find a way to bring back Emperor Palpatine. Which is what I personally think mm -hmm. Moff Gideon's goal is. Like, you know, like, we... <laughs> Ultimately, we're loyal to the Emperor, and he's our leader, so let's try to find a way to bring him back. Like, why yeah. would they be like, let's just make some random guy to, like, lead us. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just make some random, you no. know? That doesn't make any sense. I, so I to definitely, me, I agree with you. I think it's not Snoke. Smoke? Snoke? Smoke. Smoke? Snoke. I think it's not Snoke, and, and I'm irritated that he has, like, a little scar there, because it's super... <laughs> Yeah. If it, it if it isn't Snoke, then that's like a red herring and very misleading. Yeah. So Which, I mean, it wouldn't. Good. I I wanna I agree kind of with Ezra, but I also agree on the other side. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you how that works. So <laughs> I, I agree that um, I agree with you, Ezra, that Moff Gideon seems like he's loyal with his whole like long live the Empire at the end of the episode mm -hmm. three. And that other guy who was piloting that ship, he was loyal as well because mm -hmm. he was willing to die to um, further the Empire. Um, I came up with this over the since I watched this last episode and staring at that picture that Chase put up earlier. I can put it back up. Um, I think after looking at that, and I know this isn't brand new, and I know this isn't like, I'm not like saying something no one's ever heard before, but looking at that picture of Snoke made me think something it made me think anakin as a kid for some reason like the face structure made me think i see anakin as a kid's face and i wonder if if the the snoke character was supposed to be a recreation of a a, a an abomination really a mixture of of DNA to try to recreate a, a Darth Vader. I really wish you would have brought a picture. I, I know, like, I s kind of see it now. Nope. <laughs> it's, I'm not on board with this. None no, of this I is okay. I don't think that's what it is at all, but I, like, I see it. Wait, where's your, where'd the picture go? I Chase? put it back down. <laughs> I don't so, know how long to keep things up. <laughs> so, anyways, so I was thinking, what if, 
what if they had this plan to try to to make something like better than Vader was, and they used pieces of Vader or, or DNA of Vader, and they're using DNA from this force this force sensitive thing um, child, and they're well, using I mean, different pieces to try to create a better Vader. Because I mean, we know we know what 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 um, Palpatine does at the end. His plan is to try to inhabit the body of Rey. Right, so maybe mm. he's got this plan to inhabit the body of this thing that they're building to be better. But and I mean, it makes sense, right? Because we know that Palpatine was upset with, you know, Vader being chopped to pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that stunted his abilities, and his secret weapon was now a lot less powerful than it could have been. So. Uh, we also have a means as well because he's had access to Vader and Vader had to undergo multiple surgeries. Mm -hmm. So acquiring DNA and material from Vader is possible at any time. Right. So he could have got it along like any time along the way. We think think of I would just actually I was a comic series that I was reading and there's a scene where he goes in after one of his fights and there's just like cotton swabs of blood everywhere, you know, because he got all chopped up. And um, so, yeah, they could have got his DNA oh all over the place. Oh, my God. Vader has, like, a scar on his head. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah, but is that the way genetics work? No, I, it's not. I but, like, yeah, yeah, it is, it the way, is it the way plot might work? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> plot scars. So This entire conversation goes back to a thing, and I know Josh doesn't really want to talk on this, but what? when they were planning... Snoke, they was no connection. Filioni and Favreau were not involved in Snoke at all. So saying that, you know, Palpatine made Snoke was probably never in the plans until Ryan Johnson threw away episode eight. And now Filioni and Favreau are trying so desperately to fill back in the hole that Kathleen Kennedy dug themselves into. Well, so... We're, we're all just thinking this, but it's still just recovery from bad right. I mean, bad synergy in the sequels. Yeah. Any any like speculation mm -hmm. that we have is I mean it it, it it's not it doesn't exist. Like mm -hmm. whatever whatever answer we're we're trying yeah. to figure out, there's no answer yet. And that's I feel like they are trying to build that answer in kind of. And and like it is irritating, right? Because everyone, like, this is what I hate about the, and I just was talking about the Snoke scar, but this is what I hated about the whole, like, Snoke scar thing. Because, uh -huh. like, people have scars, uh -huh. right. you know? Like, it doesn't mean, like, oh, me and Chase have, like, a similar scar or whatever. We're not the same person. Like, well, like that's not exactly a scar, necessarily. It's a it's a defect. It's something, well, like, yeah. a, like their, their skull bones are not meshing properly. And it's creating a cleft, like a, a cleft uh, upper lip that some, yeah. some kids are born with. It's that kind of thing. It's not a scar, it's a defect. Yeah, because if you're yeah. creating it from brand, brand like new genetic material, mm -hmm. it shouldn't have any scars. So it, like, I understand what you're saying, yeah. Luke. It's a defect more than it's a scar. It's an error in the process mm -hmm. of cloning. Yeah. And I, I think, so, I don't know, it just, to me, when back when... You know, we were trying to figure out who Snoke was, like, before The Force Awakens even came out. And we're like, oh, this guy's a scar. And we're trying to figure out who he is based mm -hmm. on a scar. I thought that was really dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, I don't know. I still think it's well, dumb we, to, to point out, like... Though, at that time, we didn't know that Snoke was a clone. And neither did they. We um, still don't know that he's a clone. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that there was clones of him. But we, I guess we don't know that he was a clone. Yeah. yeah so, I, all Palpatine kind of said is that he, cr that. like... Everything that Kylo yeah. knew, including Snoke, was created by him. That doesn't mean it's a clone. He could have found a way to influence midi-chlorians to create life, but did it in such a rudimentary fashion where it created this abomination with these defects. So, but. the word clone is wrong because we're not we're not cre like we're not creating a copy of someone mm -hmm. based on a template right like Django fett was a template the clones were mm -hmm. copied from him snoke is an entirely new being as He's far a manifestation as what we, what we yeah. know right now so he is a creation so, yes they made copies of him but he's not a clone because they didn't like 
clone I think him. The proper term would be homunculus, possibly. <laughs> Potentially, I don't know what that right. means. A a clone is derived from one genetic source. Um, yeah, I so think... you are right there. <laughs> My point was, though, I think the reason we're calling him the clone is because it's probably a similar process to what the Cameron Owens did mm -hmm. on Camino. I would assume. Just based on, like, visu visuals, right? Like, we saw him in glass tubes, and we've seen, mm -hmm. like, clones. And, I don't, is that, yeah. It looks similar. It looks similar. Yeah, so, we're just seeing yeah. the growing process. We don't know where the process started. Yeah. yeah. So, but, um... I, I didn't know if you guys wanted the... the, the I, I actually wanted to go back and yeah. just listen to the verbiage that they use when they're talking about this thing that they're working on. Because um, I know they said M count. Everyone knows that's you midichlorian. Want, uh, Has so to be. Yeah. It's got to be, right? Like, they're bringing the midichlorians back? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay. So, I'm seeing some issues, too, with continuity, which lead me to believe that they're going to get the child again, right? Because what did they, they said specifically, they didn't have in, any more, like, DNA sample mm -hmm. from or blood from the child in mm -hmm. order to make any further projects. That's why I wanted to go back because they talked about genetic material. Then they talked about blood. Mm -hmm. So that's what made me wonder if they're talking about two different sources. They're getting the blood from the child, but they're well, getting the genetic material from something else. Josh, is DNA not in blood? <laughs> therefore, no, I said blood. Uh, but yeah, the, no, the, no, yes, but your genes, therefore... yeah, your blood contains your genes. Therefore, yeah. blood so would they, be genetic material. They could be separating they, the blood to get the genetic material out of the blood, but are using the blood itself, which contains the midichlorians, as two separate entities. I'm just, I'm just curious if there's two different things that they're trying it to It could mix. be two donors. And it's entirely possible that at this point, Palpatine is already alive somewhere. So he might already be at Exegol and is, you know, recovering from episode six and mm -hmm. they need the genetic material from palpatine but i don't understand why they're needing the have, midichlorian count of the child have there been any theories so, or any confirmations as to where in the time i know where yes we're five years after the fall case. of the empire yeah, yeah. okay so, so and, and can, wasn't it confirmed I... that the, the the palpatine we got in rise of skywalker was a clone wasn't that confirmed yeah right when i thought it was i th i thought they had to make a host body of him so they basically cloned him right let me look and see i haven't watched well, I, mean, I, I only Star saw Wars. episode nine once okay so the so. the novelized novelization of star wars the rise of skywalker confirms that palpatine oh. was a clone that's a novelization so, so yeah i wouldn't just have known not that. a very healthy one yeah. I think was yeah, it? I, the... I doubt they would have scraped him off the bottom of the reactor after he got thrown down there. Why not? Wasn't wasn't I mean, true? Didn't they say something about like he said that his current host didn't have a high enough like M count to harness his full power, and that's why he was like decaying or whatever. I don't know. I think I but think that was in, kind in of... Rise of Skywalker. So, yeah. Hmm. So that. That's what leads me to believe also that they're creating Palpatine because they needed to find a donor with a high M count. Mm. You know? I mean, I, technically, I guess they would need that for Snoke as well if he was a Force yeah. user, but I don't think he would need, like, a high M count. Also, like, when do we see him use Force abilities? Uh, episode 8, when he literally holds Rey. Do you need a high M count for that? I mean, like, he like completely freezes her still. I think I think the implication is that the more he and the more and the more aggressively he uses his force powers, the faster his clone degrades. It's like running a high voltage through a thin wire; it melts faster. It can run the current; it's just gonna catch fire very fast. I agree, and that's why I think they wanted to get the biggest, like, the most amount of midichlorians in the in the um the host body no yeah by yeah. the time by the time of that movie we don't know at, at this point mm -hmm. how successful they were in getting more material from um, i guess you're right right mm -hmm. because like that that might have been plan one like okay we're gonna get 
you know, the amount of midichlorians that we need from the child because he has a super high midichlorian count, right? And we're going to make a perfect body for Palpatine, but then they can't get, you know, they ruin all their material mm -hmm. by failed Snoke, experiments. And Snoke then is their best chance, their best attempt at it, and it failed. It wasn't capable. Yeah, I, I was going to, I was going to say that, that the, the body that they ended up having to make for Palpatine ended up not being from the child because, and that's why he was, you know, degradating so quickly. Mm -hmm. That's not how you use that word, but you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. So Joe keeps saying that the uh, clones, this is canon. Clones do not naturally have midichlorians matching their source. Um, confirmed in the aftermath series. In the, confirmed in the aftermath series. So he's so actually right about that. <laughs> And I, yeah, so maybe that's why they were trying to infuse midichlorians in, into the body from the child. Like they cloned, and they cloned Palpatine from his genetic material. Yeah. And well, that then would, infused midichlorians from the child. That would, that would support your theory about the difference between the genetic material and the blood. They used the blood to infuse the midichlorians mm -hmm. from the genetic material together. to make so, the body. Mm. Then we have to go back to the, the train of thought that this child is baby Yoda and he has to be brought back in time because if the empire knows that this is their only chance, there is no resting until this creature is dead and they harvest it that way or they, you know, harvest all of it naturally. So it, once Mando hands this off to Ahsoka next episode, this child has to go somewhere and the empire is not going to stop hunting it down. We've seen how relentless Moff Gideon is when it comes to things. So th the child has to go away. The child doesn't no, make I'm it to... I'm not willing to hop on that train yet. Oh, it, it's the only option that I'm going to accept. <laughs> I so don't like time travel. I don't want time travel in my Star Wars, no, but they've already put it there, so now it has to be used. I think there's a very small chance that this, it, this child is Yoda. I really do. Or... Or it could also be that it is a child of Yoda. We don't know their birthing mm. cycle. Or they are a very strange and mysterious. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know like genius. anything about them. We don't know anything. Yeah. This is true. But again, once we get to episode seven, where is this kid? Yeah. Maybe dead. M could be dead. But then why didn't they maybe, harvest? Maybe, why didn't maybe they maybe harvest the? Or Snoke. But then why wouldn't it have had ni high enough M count? Because we're already saying that this the child has a super high midichlorian count. It might be a compatibility issue. Mm. That, so just, this, this, so just wait, the all right, no. wait. I'm sorry. Say this again. Ch Chase, po pose your question again. Where is the child when we get to episode seven? What's the point behind that question? Where Where does this he child go? Yoda. So I'm Yoda. I'm go fully sold into was it Joa's theory of this child is legitimately yeah, baby yeah, Yoda that. and it has to go back in time. So mm -hmm. where is the child when we get to episode seven? Why? So you're you're saying the fact that he's back in time supports Palpatine's body not being perfect? Is that... no. Okay. I I'm on a completely different part of the world than you. Okay. So I'm saying that the re well it, it's quasi related. If the child was still here. The Empire isn't going to stop hunting it down until they get the midichlorians they need for the Emperor's body. Right. So the th they, they'll okay. never just let it exist peacefully. So this child either had to die and they harvested the midichlorians for it, or they captured it alive and harvested the midichlorians from it. So clearly the or... child is not around by the time we get to Episode 7. So where is it? Or they successfully fake its death. I mean, that's a common trope everyone loves to exploit. But you're talking that's about the f you're talking about the force. You can sense the force. It's not gonna. You can't hide but, a presence that Moff, strong. Can Moff Gideon detect a presence that strong? I mean, where do we where do we find the child? Yeah, how did they track him? Because there was they tracked him, right? Like yeah, they had uh, a segment of his uh, gene code. A small segment, and not right. enough to get a general location. So, um, that's interesting. Which, uh, well, that that also begs the question, uh, Chase. Mm -hmm. If they, if they, if it was actually Yoda stolen from the past, 
Wouldn't they have more than just a segment of his gene code? No, I'm not saying that this is Yoda stolen from the past. I'm saying that this is Yoda. He's in his current timeline and is about to be sent to the past to okay. live out his life in safety, where the Emperor so can't get him. The Yoda that we know from 4, 5, and 6 is actually the yeah. end of his life. That's his future from where we are now. Ah, that if you are interested in uh, time travel, by the way, stay tuned for our Thursday night stream. I forget what it is. Time we travel. We don't know what it is. It's it's a something special that Chase is going to I told you guys, time travel. Oh, okay. It's the different types of time travel that we've seen in sci-fi. I think that'll oh, be a fun conversation. Very cool. That will be an interesting conversation. Yeah, I'm right. excited. Chase but... will be arriving from the future to tell us all about it. <laughs> <laughs> He's already told us about it. He's gone back into the yeah. past. To, to... I did look back in the Discord for like a week ago, but still. The, so, um, so the oh, pa sorry. Sorry. our from where we are now, if we're saying the Mandalorian exists in our present, Yoda's future is in the past, or the child's future is in the past. That has a lot of strange questions. I mean, it would it would technically mean that Yoda would have a lot of future events understood. So, how much think... would he though? Because he's a child right now. How much do you think he currently grasps or remembers of the situation? I think he's well. He's fifty and... years old. I think he's far more intelligent and capable and... than we give him credit. I agree, and that's why I had said when we discussed this theory with Joa. I think that's why he has a strong connection to Ahsoka in the Clone Wars, and that's why he takes her under his wing and agrees that she's, even though she's young to become an actual Padawan, she's still of youngling age, she hands her on as a Padawan because he knows what track her future needs to take in order to get him to the past. Or, or so, he knows at least enough to know that she is actually going to become a great Yes. Jedi. Unless he's colorblind... I am subscribed to the theory that his at least early development of his brain is very slow. Yeah. And hence why he still acts like a child, mm -hmm. even well, though he's 50. And I'll okay. tell you why, because he doesn't know the difference between red and blue. This is my theory on the entire matter. <laughs> it's not color blindness. It's the simple fact that their species has very poor lingual skills. Yoda, at the end of his life, mm. could barely string together complete sentences. <laughs> so it makes sense that even yeah. as a fifty-year-old, fifty-year-old being, he'd have absolutely no ability to create speech. He's very intelligent. You can tell that even though he's a so. Dead you're dead saying that if if he said, "Touch those wires," mm -hmm. you may not. Then, well, no. So <laughs> he wouldn't have been that, electrocuted. That's that's been discussed as that was there was a change in their in the like the grammar of his species that happened when Yoda was much older as you can't teach an old dog new tricks if you tried to teach somebody who is 90 right now that only speaks Spanish if you were to try and teach them how to speak English they're not going to get a firm grasp on it so I think that's the comparison but I think if we go back to the baby Groot thing that Josh talked about do you really think that Groot didn't know what Rocket was saying he's saying don't touch the button and kids are defiant little monsters. Josh should know. Yep. And all they're going to do is the exact opposite of what you tell them to do. So he even looks at it. And he's like, the red wire. And he looks at his right hand. He knows what one the red wire is. And he's like, all right, make sure they don't touch. <laughs> like. Yeah, the first thing in his head. You can't was, see my hands, but he's. Well, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you might be right. So he, he just wanted to. Like, he mm -hmm. just because, yeah. because you said no, he's going to do Yes, it. exactly. That happens right. every day in my house. Mm -hmm. Probably every hour. Yeah, exactly oh, what I'm saying. Yeah. Theory confirmed. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have an expert right here who's seen this in action. Yes. <laughs> Two-year-olds. They will never do what you tell them. All right. Okay. All right. Sorry. Way off so, topic. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't remember why my point was... Me neither. Yeah, like I was... We we're talking about his brain developing... Oh, remembering Remembering things in the past. Or yeah. the future. Remembering the future from the past. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, well, maybe that's just, why he's... this might throw. This is not going to make it any easier what we've been talking about. But I just thought it was kind of interesting. Is that the music that plays while they're looking at the test mm -hmm. tube, whatever it is, um, was a mix of the Snoke theme song from Force Awakens 
and Palpatine's teachings from Revenge of the Sith. So... <laughs> so they're purposely they trying purposely... to say, it's one of them! Okay, okay. <laughs> I have it then. I have it. It is 100% Palpatine. It's 100% Palpatine because of the scar. Okay. That seals the deal for me. They're trying to confuse us, mm -hmm. so they make that mix of those two musics and put it there so that the like smart among us or the people who recognize that kind of music will say, okay, it's one of these two, right? Mm -hmm. And then they'll see the scar and say, it's definitely Snoke. And well, that's why it's not Snoke, because they purposely are trying to misdirect us. <laughs> here's here's my original theory uh, before, you know, doing the reading up and talking with you guys about it before this, this episode. My thought is, is that Gideon is actually sourcing the original projects. That's where the connection it comes in, because it's the same cloning. He's trying to make Force-sensitive super soldiers, specifically to that's all his own his whole goal he's not actually directly supporting palpatine although as you, we've said he's loyal so palpatine's like i want your research he'd give it to him but right now his goal is just to make a powerful super soldier because we've already seen he likes powerful stormtrooper super soldiers he's got a set that came in and shot up the bar at the end of last season yeah. so my thought is is that's that's the goal that's all they are they are connected with the similar flaws that he's experiencing that that Palpatine experienced and probably why that entire project was rejected and Palpatine moved on to. Um, why can't I think of her name now? Um, Ray. The girl. Ray, thank Ray. you. Uh, that's why he moved on to Ray because he found out, oh, I can just use her. And she, he abandoned that project. What, where he is in that plan right now, Palpatine, we don't know. But right now, Gideon is, is extending that project for his own purposes. So I, I actually kind of agree with you because yeah. I was, but I don't really know enough about that last scene we get. We get these, um, and Chase, you get some yep. pictures. We get some black troopers um, armor. And a lot of people have been saying, this is a nod to the 1995 video game, Dark Forces, where we get the Dark Trooper. Um, I agree with what I see anyways, but I was wondering, and I don't know enough about that, and know who might know is Brett. Brett is like, a, for, for Star Wars, he's got a, a, lot, a large knowledge on this stuff. Um, what, who was actually in the Dark Troopers from that video game? Like, was it... Who was really in those troopers? Were they just uh, trained stormtroopers, or were they some kind of clone fighting machine? That's what I want to know. We're going to have to wait like a couple seconds. Yeah. Um, yeah. While he's answering that, um, I wanted to ask, are those... I was, I was thinking those troopers are either death troopers or purge troopers. They look like purge troopers to me. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking they were purge troopers. They don't look I like think... death troopers. Doesn't the hand yeah. of that that thing look robotic though? They do look cyborg, uh, like, like maybe cyborg, cyborgs are yeah. cybernetically enhanced in some way. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't see the. No, I don't think they are purge troopers. So, the purge troopers have uh, the dome top is is smooth and it goes down to their face mask. And there's almost like a cowl. There's a little more yeah. Darth Vader in these helmets. Joa says what... droids or cyborgs. I think probably cyborg. Yeah. I first, when I saw them quickly, I just thought they looked like Vader. But then when I went back and looked, I'm like, okay, there's definitely differences. I saw differences. that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are definitely differences. I think what this is is the culmination of all the technologies, the cybernetics that that Vader had, the genetic work that, that Palpatine was working on, and uh, his own advances in in uh child bloodletting <laughs> that are putting this creature together so brett says dark troopers were advanced battle droids and infantry exoskeletons that featured heavy plating and resembled the armor of stormtrooper powerful weapons and jump pack uh, so, so that's, that's that looks like what we're yeah. looking at here yep if I that's agree. the case and then there wouldn't be any genetic material in there it would all be yeah well, robotic. and the other, the other thing, too, I was going to say, like, 
it doesn't track because they're having failed experiments. They don't have a successful experiment yet. So how is this we're seeing? Right. Yeah. You know, it, that doesn't mm -hmm. track. I want, I want to know, and this isn't probably a thing to figure out now, but I want to do research now and figure out like, how old is Ray? When was she born? And like, try to track back like the, the latest that Palpatine could have been created or recreated. Right. Because if we think about it, I mean, Ray is his granddaughter, so, and her father was a Palpatine clone. So I kind of feel like, or and I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. This is just what I think. Yeah. Palpatine was, when he got thrown into the pit, the chasm or whatever, and died, his clone already existed. He was in a test tube somewhere floating in a pickle jar, and they just pulled him out. And he was able to go in right away. So he didn't really skip a beat there. Because look at how old and nasty well, he looked. He was uh -huh. kind of like falling apart. And if he was a clone, he should have been. Well, do you think Ray the, was old, the old and nasty is attributed to the fact that like his body was imperfect. And he couldn't harness all of the force ability that he had. So they you think they cloned him after he died? Yeah. Also, like, all right, and I need to know this too, which I, I don't. Feel like is, the e, is, is the EA Battlefront 2 story mode um, canon? Because if it is, then we definitely know that Palpatine wasn't alive in those early years that the, you know, after he died, right? Because he had a, like, like a robot with, like, basically a, his master plan programmed into it. I don't know if you've ever seen like it's like a red Palpatine robot. Yes. Yep. Then that's basically what was executing his orders, like mm. while he was away. Yeah, that was in Battlefront too. Yeah. 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 And it, and I think that also drives from like a Legends book or something. I have uh, another thought, and I don't know where this ties in. I've I've read uh, some content about about specifically special orders that were supposed to like. Uh, destroy every single imperial planet when palpatine died as kind of like a final order with the logic of if you can't keep your emperor alive then you don't deserve to live yourself kind of thing how does that tie into all of this if he had a fallback plan why would that order have come in come into effect and did it in in current so lore i wonder my guess is just because of the relative strength of the empire after he died because as soon as he died, the New Republic gained so much ground. And instead of, you know, the battles mostly going in the way of the Empire, the battles turned to be more in the way of the Republic. So, so the original theory behind that was uh, before all this mm -hmm. sequel stuff was that when Palpatine died, people didn't realize that the Empire's strength came from the sheer willpower of the Emperor himself. That mm -hmm. His force was so great that he was actually directing and driving his troops all across the field and that's why the so you're saying that he was kind of using like bastila's force uh what would they call it battle meditation yeah so yeah, you're he, yeah. Hmm. interesting he, he was supporting the empire through sheer willpower alone i think i think that comes from timothy zahn's series of books i could be wrong there i missed all of that because i was responding to people in discord <laughs> Sorry. Basically, Luke was just saying that Palpatine used an equivalent of battle meditation, which gave the Empire most of its strength. And so once he died and they no longer had that like willpower backing them, that's why everything swung in the way of the New Republic. Mm, that yeah. makes sense. That could be, yeah. See that. So I know, Luke, you're going to head off in a bit. Unfortunately, so, yes. Um, one thing I just found that I thought I wanted to, I wanted to bring up was that apparently we get dark troopers in two different places. I didn't realize. I thought it was just from the Dark Forces video game, but I guess there was a comic book series called Dark Empire. It was done by Dark Horse Comics. And in that, in that one, um, the dark troopers were force-sensitive Imperial commandos. So I guess it, it, it leads to the question, what kind of dark trooper are we getting? Are we getting the kind that has a human inside, or are we getting the kind from the video game, which, which has, um, according to this, half man, half machine hybrid soldiers? 
I'm noticing I, that the dark troopers and that I, I just looked it up. They were force sensitive. They had they used the dark side of the force. <laughs> Which isn't that? Am I wrong to say the purge troopers had the dark side of the force as well? I don't know that purge troopers did. Inquisitors for sure, but yeah, okay. I don't. I think the purge troopers were just special trained to kill Jedi. Yeah, these like Mandalorians. Um, yeah. These uh, look cybernetic in nature, the ones from the mm -hmm. episode. Yeah. I agree. So I'm more inclined to believe that that the, it's that one. But we'll see. I mean, it's interesting. So yeah. let's just go back and touch really quickly. Do we have any scenes left from the trailer that we haven't seen? I think no. I think we've seen we every scene from the trailer. <laughs> Because yeah, I think the I last know. one was basically those speeders on Navarro, which now we've seen. And we yeah. got the, the scene where the, the Mithril was with them, right? But that yep. was, we got that scene. In From the TV too. spot, yeah. So yeah. I think everything that we are going to get for the coming weeks, brand new, we've got no idea what to expect. And I'm oh, excited. I'm sure they, I'm yeah, sure I'm they planned that. I'm sure I'm they did, yeah. too. Excited. I'm super excited. I'm really excited to see Ahsoka Tano. Mm, live action Ahsoka. I think we're going to get that next week. Oh, I'm so excited. We have to. Yep. Friday. So. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap this. Um, what did you guys think of episode four of season two or episode 12, whatever you want to call it, of The Mandalorian? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, um, just so you know, on Thursday this week, since we all have the day off, we're going to be doing a special live stream on time travel. So be sure to um, subscribe to the channel. And pay attention to your notifications. If you put the bell icon on, it will warn you that we got a live video coming. And, um, yeah, we'd love to see if you come along and, and, and uh, join the chat and, and uh, talk to us. That would be great. Thanks for watching this episode. And until next time, Mando, I just want them off my planet. I didn't think of a final word.